How to win the wholesaling real estate game in 2024. What is up guys? Zach in here. Rick in here. And in today's video, we're going to talk exactly how to win in wholesaling real estate. This year, a lot of stuff has changed. And really, if you don't know what's going on in the wholesaling real estate game right now, you're going to be in trouble. The, the, the truth is there's so many wholesaling real estate videos out there from 2021, 2022, 2023, right? Like, you know, back in the good old days um, <laughs> of how wholesaling real estate used to work. And a lot of stuff has changed. And this video is not to talk about what's changed from last year to this year, but really to give you a guide from now moving forward of exactly how to win. You know, I get asked a lot, you know, what do I have to do to win? How do I become successful? And really what we want to do today is, is really just talk about this, right? Like mm -hmm. how to actually become successful, how to win and how to actually get results, right? Because we're here to talk about results. We're not here to talk about anything else. And if you've ever seen uh, any other wholesaling guru talk about this, right? Um, no one's given them more results in wholesaling real estate than us. And we've helped more people than ever to get rich wholesaling real estate. So we know what we're talking about. We're here to help you out. and do a lot of deals, wholesaling houses. So uh, let's talk about this. Let's break this all down and let's kind of share exactly what you need to do. Now, the first thing you have to learn here, and you know, I, I've made a lot of mistakes in wholesaling real estate in the past. And I think this is the first thing you need to understand. To win in wholesaling, you're going to have to fail. You're going to have to make mistakes. Bad things are going to happen. I don't know one rich guy in wholesaling where bad things haven't happened. And the point is how you learn from these mistakes. Now, either you make mistakes faster or you make less mistakes, but you make them slower, right? Uh, as long as you're not going to jail, doing anything stupid, right? Um, in wholesaling real estate, you should be fine. And so what I mean by this is make your mistakes, but try to do them fast and, and learn from them fast. You know, I, I see a lot of wholesalers lose deals because they don't do uh, pretty basic things that we teach in our free wholesaling course, freewholesaling.com, mm -hmm. that if you went through the course, you could avoid a lot of these mistakes, but there's still mistakes of you stuttering in front of the sellers, being nervous talking to them and not knowing really what to say when you mm -hmm. get a crazy objection. You got to do this. And to win in wholesaling real estate, you have to fumble a little. You have to kind of mess up. Now, as a beginner, I've done wholesaling deals, you know, made 100K my first year, mistake after mistake, but learning from those mistakes actually made me rich. And the one thing I'll add too is one of the biggest mistakes I made was just trying to wholesale in all these different areas in my city. And then I started making mistakes like, wow, I, I cannot get any deals in this area. I was like, oh, this is a mistake. Let's go to the ones that are actually working and actually ended up making more money. And so mistakes are a good thing. And it's something I think a lot of people don't really understand here. Yeah, I call it the, uh, the triple F. <clears throat> I learned when I started, it was actually one of the fundamental tools that taught me. And I learned this too. It actually applies to any entrepreneur, like on any business, specifically to wholesaling. So we call it triple F. It's not what you think. Fail forward fast. The faster you can fail forward, the better you'll do. The way we teach you is you will stumble, you will fail, but you won't get killed. Meaning you're, you're minimizing your risk and you're maximizing your reward. The problem is a lot of you, the minute you hit a stump or a failure, you want to stop. And honestly, that's the sign where you're uncomfortable. You got to just keep on going. The rope is there to pull you up. It's freewholesaling.com. It's Rick. It's Zach. Fail forward fast. If you get it, remember, because if the worst thing you do is nothing, okay, because that's a decision in there. But if you decide to do something that's outside your bounds, like wholesaling, and you've committed to it, and that's great, you've got to do it. And the thing is, the minute it doesn't work out. You got to keep doing it and keep doing it. And then eventually you get it. The best analogy you ever gave Zach was the riding your bike. Everybody oh, yeah. fails on the first bike ride, but you know what the difference is? The ones that wanted it real bad, get through it. The ones that can't handle it and they just let their emotions take over. They stop. Well, so the other part about riding a bike is yeah. you can't read a book on how to ride a bike. And what I mean by this is a lot of you guys, you know, I love you watch our content and you do need to understand the rules of the game. And, mm -hmm. and sometimes a lot of guys need a little motivation or just like, Hey, there's no one around your family or area that is millionaires that are pushing you to become better people. And that's why you hop on these live streams and just kind of have this in the back of your mind that that's important for a lot of people. A lot of people are beginners trying to learn, but the thing I, I beg you is just do it though. And you will, 
And every single guy or gal that pops up here that that is winning in the wholesaling game that becomes successful, right? They've they learn about ten percent of their knowledge to make money in wholesaling by listening to me and Rick. And they learn ninety percent by actually just doing it. There, there's something about actually doing something that just clicks in your mind. I hate to say it, like it just that's how you get better at it, right? And, and so in wholesaling real estate. Yes, you, you can read the books on how to ride a bike, but like until you get on the bike, mm -hmm. it's completely different. It's real. It's live. It's scary. It's uncomfortable. It's just like wholesaling. So think about when you learn to ride a bike. I remember teaching this guy to ride a bike. And you get all wiggly and you go off and you, and then he skin the new, he starts crying. You got a choice. You can brush him off and give him the confidence to get back or let failure take people over. You got to make a choice in life. Wholesaling is no different. You have to. And then the other thing in wholesaling real estate we got to talk about right now, especially of how to win, you need to learn how to adapt. And this is something that we're making a big point on this year and a really big point for everyone watching this. But you have to learn how to adapt. This wholesaling real estate game is drastically changing. It is. Everything is drastically changing. And this is not a bad thing. Wholesaling real estate has been drastically changing for the past 30 40 years okay people have been doing assignment of contracts and selling equ equitable interest in real estate deals for two three hundred years it's all changed go to the smithsonian uh american history museum there's something there called um it's on it's like elm street and it's like one of the first they literally have a house from the 1700s they literally put in the museum wholesale and, and this and this one guy <laughs> was selling deeds on there right it's literally in the museum we got, we got pictures and everything of it right wholesaling real estate's changed a lot and I love reading old real estate wholesaling books from you know, 80, 70 years ago, um, even 50 years ago. And it just shows how a lot of things have changed. And this isn't a bad thing. It, it's always a changing thing. It's like basketball, football. Football is different than it was 30, 40, 50 years ago. NBA basketball is different than it was 70 years ago. Is that a bad thing? No, but it's just different. And so either you learn how to adapt or you just – you get behind, right? So if you played basketball, I hate to say this, like, you know, uh, like Wilt Chamberlain. Like we love Wilt Chamberlain's one of the best, but if you played like him now, you get destroyed. Now, Wilt Chamberlain was born in 2001 and he was 18, 19. Oh, he'd dominate. Like he'd be one of the best ever. But just if you use the old style now, it ain't going to work, right? And you just got to learn how to adapt. And there's things in the 70s or 80s from basketball that you use now and you'll do well. You just got to learn how to adapt on the right things. And I, I see a lot of wholesalers not doing this. And this is what the problem And the problem in wholesaling, it's like doggy years. One year in wholesaling is like seven years for a regular business change. And just things drastically go nuts. And so you always have to be ready for the change. That's why I love you guys hopping on these live streams, actually watching us live do wholesaling deals. Because you get to hear from a wholesaling real estate millionaires of exactly what's going on. Me doing nationwide wholesaling. I, I, the trends, I see it instantly and I'll do a live stream on it, right? Not a recorded video from four years ago. And it, yeah. it, you get live, you ask the questions, we give you exactly what's going on right now. Now, the one change I've been seeing the most on recently is marketing lists and channels have been dying or drying up and some have been heating up and going nuts. New software has come out here and I hate to say this, but like every year, there's probably a 50 new wholesaling softwares that come out. And or or changes in wholesaling software, and ninety nine percent of them are just like they're just rewrapped, stupid like things. Like they're not different, uh, but there are some things that do it that absolutely destroy the way you used to do channels and ways that make it better. Right? Uh, I'll give everyone one example: is SMS text blasting. Right? SMS text blasting just be last year was insane. It had a yeah. huge comeback. It was amazing. It was working great. It was getting great results. But here's the problem. Yes, it was doing well, but you always have to remember that what is ever, whatever's working now in wholesaling, like a snap of the finger, it could change tomorrow. And that's what happened in SMS. Like the regulations came and it got a lot harder to do wholesaling deals. And so, you, and then other things opened up and other things didn't, right? But you should just always have your backup plans and have analysis of what's working, what's not, right? And so when SMS started slowing down, digital band signs started heating up. And that's just a new strategy we gave everyone here. Uh, we teach you guys how to do it for free at freelancing.com. But like, you always have to have that backup plan. If you have one marketing strategy that's just working insanely well, 
you got to ask yourself this. And if you don't ask yourself this, you can be broke tomorrow. It's like, if this marketing channel went away or this list, what is my backup plan? Do I have a plan of action? If you don't, you don't want to be caught with your pants down, right? Yeah, it's... I see it happen all the time. And what you guys got to understand is the the techniques I teach and, and Zach teaches, because <laughs> we did it together, is the way we teach you to wholesale. Those fundamentals are always going to be the mechanics of the, the human interaction. Now, the techniques we're going to use in the marketing medium we're going to deliver and how we get data, that's what's like changing like light speed. So we're going to teach you how to get the best connection possible, but this side of it where stuff's changing, honestly, I've never seen information move as fast as it is now. And that's what a lot of you are competing with and somewhat you're struggling with it. Learn the fundamentals of wholesaling. That's not going to change. And then you add it with the most up-to-date information, what's working in your local market, what trends do you see nationally, and that's how you get really good at wholesaling. Because I see a lot of people that are really good with the data, but they don't have the fundamentals of wholesaling, and they're, they're not going to convert very well. And some people are really good at the fundamentals of wholesaling, and they don't like, Rick, which data do I use? And so we try to put this channel together to help merge the two together to give you the best opportunity humanly possible for wholesaling. So I've seen a lot over 21 years. And the last two years has been the most rapid change. And I will tell you this, if you can figure out wholesaling right now, because honestly, it's like you're in the basement of wholesaling. I think it could potentially explode with the change of interest rates and reductions. And cash buyers are really kind of, they're at a low point right now. There's plenty of them. Don't get me wrong. There's but I'm telling you, when it, if when it peaks up again, the people that are most prepared have the fundamentals and have the latest tools will absolutely dominate their wholesaling markets. Uh, yeah, I'll tell you, like even looking back at last year, that was probably, I mean, it was, it was our best year ever, but it was probably one of the hardest times to, to wholesale when I compare the, my seven years of wholesaling, right? Because interest rates just kept going up and it made things a lot crazy, right? Uh, and now we see, you know, you, you know the, the Fed, you know, they... They're, they say they're going to keep cutting and they're going to keep it the same, right? Who, who knows? But it's a lot easier now than it was last year. And it's always a matrix of how hard the buyers are to sell the deals to and how easy the sellers are. And like I've always predicted, and my predictions are pretty good for wholesaling, that the sellers have gotten easier and the buyers have kind of stayed the same, which overall makes wholesaling better. Last year, buyers were harder and sellers were more difficult because they weren't adapting to the rise in interest rates. Now interest rates have kind of stayed the same. We might see some cuts, you know, uh, yeah, who knows, but it's easier now to wholesale than ever. And now there are other trends I've told you, and there's one huge change and kind of going back to learning how to adapt. And this is something I said three years ago. Uh, my, my When I make a prediction, it's very accurate. Like when I make a bold one, right? And I say, this is something I, I actually believe in. Uh, I'm rare, rarely wrong with this. I said three years ago, wholesaling real estate is going to quadruple its size in the next five years. I, 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 when I saw TikTok coming out, you know, three, four years ago, I was like, this is insane. And I saw wholesalers, sorry, kids that are 17 years old, 18 years old, like me, like when I was 18, making a hundred thousand, 10 grand a month at 18, 19, 17 years old. Holy mother of pearl. That's a lot of money. <laughs> I mean, you give you give you give an eighteen year old twenty bands. What do you think he's going to do with it, right? I mean, let me ask you a question. You give a high schooler twenty thousand dollars. He makes in one month, barely working. What do you think he's going to do? Come on, we've all been eighteen. He's going to take that cash, flash in front of a camera, and show off. That's what he's going to do. And unfortunately, the way TikTok works is it's attention, attention, attention. Five seconds. Yeah. He's he's that young and he has this cash. I want to do that. That's how it works. And that the, the way that short form content thing on TikTok, it, it blew up everything. Crazy. And so any Joe Schmo who is able to make 100K wholesaling, which there's a very, very, very large portion of these people uh, that wanted to just start showing off, it became insane. And wholesaling real estate doubled instantly, doubled again, and probably doubling again this year. The amount of TikTok people coming in, all these things. And, you know, it's crazy. It is uh, absolutely insane. Like if you look on my Instagram, I can make a post saying, Hey, you want to make 10 grand in seven days? You, sorry. You want to make 10 grand learning wholesaling in seven days this month? Just check this out and it'll get half a million to a million views. It's insane. Yeah, I didn't I, even show the money. 
then people click and they see the, the cash and they go, okay. But like, yeah. it's crazy how this works. And I said, you know what? I fought it for a long time. I don't want all these newbies in. And I said, you know what? How about I be the one that teaches them? Because I hate all these wholesaling gurus. And it, it's always funny because no one believes me. You know, I, I'll have half a million views on a video. And then every comment's like, this guy's not really going to teach me for free. Oh, then teach me for free then. And I get, all, it's so funny. And then all, I love, I just want to give a shout out to everyone in the comments. They're like, no, he's actually does it for free. And they're like, no, he doesn't. And they're like, yeah, he does. And then they all DM freelson.com. They're all great. But the problem is if I'm part of the problem, but the issue is there's way more people part of that problem. And either you like it or not, wholesaling real estate is going to get bigger and bigger. Wholesaling real estate to this day, if you're 16, 17, 18 years old, the only way legally in less than a month to run up $40,000 with no money, no experience. You can have a criminal record. You can look like anyone. You can sound like it. It doesn't. This is what's the beautiful part of wholesaling. It is. But there is a cash to it because it is a get rich, quick, hard scheme. So I, we usually used to, people call it a get rich, quick scheme. It's a get rich, quick, hard work scheme. Yeah. And so, yes, you can get rich quick if you work hard. And because it's truly the only business in this country and maybe in the world where the zero dollars, you can make 40 grand a month. It, it's, it was unbelievable to me seven years ago that no one talked about it. And because now everyone's talking about it, it just, there's more and more. And the, the problem in wholesaling real estate is how many teenagers, teenage men, okay. Oh, I, I, women shout out to the girl bosses out here, but let's look at teenage boys that want to make a bunch of money, want to drive a cool car, and that want to get filthy, stinking rich really quick with a very short amount of time. Pretty about 99% of them, right? Yeah. Everyone's getting money quick, right? And so that's pretty much every teenage man uh, in the United States, right? Um, and so unfortunately, this business is only getting bigger. There's going to be more wholesalers. And so we can decide what we want to do about this. We can either say they're competition, they're bear, terrible, bad, and we make less money, or we decide to work with other wholesalers. What I decided four years ago was I'm just going to work with these people and use, not use them, but like work with them to expand our operations. And so I got really, I got very good at finding cash buyers. And so in areas like Detroit, Texas, right, all, all these areas where I wasn't really doing too much virtual wholesaling, I was like, hey, you got a deal in Texas. I got these buyers, right? It's JV. And all these new wholesalers who didn't know how to sell their deals, they were just, were splitting checks, $40,000 deals. I was making 20 grand. I was just bringing a buyer, right? Mm -hmm. Which is still a great service to do because a lot of people, they have bad buyers and I'll provide bigger assignment fees than anyone else. Um, but like, think about that for a second, right? And that was a huge business opportunity for me. And, and the thing I'm trying to teach back in 2024 is 2023, I was doing like a ton of JVs, like insane amount. And we're, we're trying to push the pace now. But now I'm trying to show you guys how to do the same thing. Like I, I already make a stupid amount of money wholesaling houses. Why don't I just show you what I'm doing? Okay. And that's what we're doing today uh, too. But like work with other wholesalers, guys. Like one thing I'll tell everyone is know all your competition if you can. Know all the wholesalers in your area. Not because you want to hate them or talk bad with them, but actually work with them. And I'll say in our local market, there's some wholesalers that I'm not fans of. Let's say that in the nicest way, but I'll still JV deals with them and they'll hit me up for JVs and we'll, we'll make, you know, five, $10,000 on a $20,000 deal, just splitting it. But like, it's not bad. And the truth is you just got to know them and let them know who you are. And the better one are just newbies because these newbies aren't bitter. They're eager and they're willing to work hard. They're, and if yeah. you work with them in the beginning, they're not going to hate you. I see a lot of competition. They hate you because you've stolen deals from them and all these things. If you got the 19-year-old kid that wants to drive for dollars and lock up deals, work with him for three or four deals. He will work with you for five deals. And you could probably make five times 50 grand off of him working together. And he'll probably send you deals when he struggles on them. And He's a lifelong per person to work with. Either you decide to make $50,000 with that person or you decide to make $0. Like it's your choice. And so know your competition, work with them. I promise you it's not that hard. Literally, I, I would say the trifecta here is going to be YouTube comments. All right. Like literally go in the comment section. Let people know who you are. Hey, this is Zach Ken. I'm in Port St. Lucie, Florida doing the Treasury Coast. Here's my phone number, 772, blah, 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 blah. 
And here's my email. Hit me up. Let's talk. Let's network and do this, right? My Instagram's this, right? Facebook groups. Guys, wholesaling houses for real. I mean, there's there's, there's a, over 130,000 people. It'll get to 200,000 soon, hopefully. Like it, it's there's hundreds of thousands of people in that Facebook group. Think about that. Yeah, and guys, how many people in that Facebook group do you think are in your market? Out of 130,000, 140,000, 50,000, it's a ton. And I'm talking to like some of you more seasoned wholesalers. A lot of you take the attitude, well, I don't want to work with a newbie because they're clueless. They don't know what they're doing. I'm telling you, you got to take the opposite approach. They're eager, they're hungry. And if you can get like one deal done with them, they will call you for everything. And, and here's my, my pitch to every newbie that calls me. We do a JV deal together. I go, Rick, I just got a, always, I just got a few questions about this deal. And I tell him, I go, let's just partner up on it. Now I, I don't work for free and I don't expect any of you do, but like if you can do one successful deal, I can usually get three to four. Now, if you're in a local market, it's even more. I did my first 30 deals like JVing because I was so heavily in the marketing, but a lot of you guys write off newbies. I'm just telling you, I love them because they're eager, they're excited. And they'll, they'll knock on thousands of doors An old guy, like we don't do it anymore. And so like when you discount the youth and the people that are excited about it, you can really have a huge impact and yeah. make a ton of money. And some of you go, Oh, he or she's just wasting my time. I'm telling you, if you do one deal, they'll call you 15, 20 more times. And that's an opportunity for 15 or 20 more JVs. I'm not telling you to give up your time free. You guys make the decision, but helping people. And now we talk about doing it nationally with all this technology. I didn't have this opportunity when I started out. This is absolutely amazing. So he's right with the YouTube comments uh, on our live streams, everything else. There's If you can help others get to where they want to go, you'll make all the money in the world you want to do. That's what me and Zach do. I, what are we doing right now? We're helping. We are helping. We are taking down all the barriers and just showing you how to wholesaling. How do, how do we get payback return? You guys do deals with us. So if we do it, why don't you just take the playbook from Zach and Rick and duplicate it? It's not complicated. That I, guys, we give free stuff out because I, frankly, no one else is willing to do it. I, just being completely honest, scary, it's scary, very, it's very scary. What happens if we're not here? You know, knock <laughs> on wood. But like, who else is going to teach wholesaling real estate for free and spend tens of thousands of dollars a month on a free course just to keep the servers up from the terabytes of data that you guys consume on it? Because the, the course is huge. Consider the history books. If no I, does we it. just did our wholesaling, we never went on camera. What would happen in the wholesaling industry? It would be literally rewritten, in my opinion. It'd you could crazy. say that about any part of history, but it's it's kind of neat if you think about it, because like it takes people to stand up and make a change, and nobody likes change. But I'm here to tell you, man, life is nothing but change. Embrace it, enjoy it, have fun with it. We have absolutely disrupted the wholesaling. I don't expect everyone to agree with what I do. If I did, I'm probably doing it wrong. So. We have haters out there. We have people on agree. I don't care. We just I'll concentrate you, man, on what you guys want. The greatest people I've ever looked up to in the world that, you know, a lot of them aren't alive. They decided to make a change in the face of craziness and uh, unsurmountable odds. And they got the courage and they didn't care. And they did what was right in their hearts. Greatest people I've ever looked up to. Greatest people of all time in the United States, right? Think of who, whoever you want. They, they pretty much all of them decided to make a change when no one else is willing to stand up. And that's what I willing to do for wholesaling, right? I'm crazy about this business, I'm crazy about this industry. That's what we're looking to do. But let's keep talking, right? Now, this year, I'm going to tell you this. If you want to win, old school is the new, new school, all right? <laughs> what I mean by this is with the, the, the new technology and all these things in wholesaling, everyone's kind of, sounds, sounds cringy, but like it, it, we've all turned into like a sheep mentality, right? You watch any wholesaling guru on the internet, what do they all tell you to do? Buy the software. I love software, by the way. FYI, yeah. I tell everyone, buy the software, pull this general list, skip trace here, pay a VA to call, or send direct mail. That, like, that is what is taught. That is new school. That's technology. That this is the new, new wholesaling, right? Where everyone pulls the same list, everyone calls the same thing, and uses the same data provider, right? It's, it's, it's sad. It, now, now, how do we make most of our money? I, I would say our best is obviously going to be pulling a list from a data provider and just sending mail out, right? Duh. 
but like when we're looking at someone looking that's but when you scale out you kind of have to do what everyone's doing right like is billboards the best way to find motivated sellers for marketing no but when you're coca-cola and you have hundreds of billions of dollars of like marketing spend you're gonna have to reach a broader audience right mm -hmm. and so the old school is the new new school right when all these new strategies are being pushed where everyone just clicks a button and it's done the problem is Hate to tell you, like when everyone's doing the same thing, that motivated seller is going to get calls from 15 of the same people. It's great. It's, there's nothing unique about it. And you're not going to stand out with a seller. And the cool part is, you know, I, I, it's what gurus do, but like, you know, there, there's these ancient scrolls that have been lost in history teaching the ancient art of wholesaling real estate that got lost in translation, right? Because most wholesaling gurus, they bought a seminar course from 2004, 2005, and they learned from that guy. Mm -hmm. And that guy taught this guy and then your guru. And then your guru basically has put his foot in the sand and not changed. And he doesn't do wholesaling deals anymore, right? And he's kind of in that mentality. Pull software, do this, do this, right? And that's what they teach and it works, but it's not the best. Now, remember these old movies? It's like, oh, there's this new kung, there, there's old kung fu ancient scroll that teaches this secret art. And wow, it changes everything, right? Well, that kind of inspired me to, and, and kind of you to the point where it's like, th there's these ancient scrolls, right? And we use this book a lot. The reason is because th th this is just a, I feel like, the, I hate to say it, this is this book is divine intervention in the whole thing real estate game. How did we find this book? Uh, through a wholesale deal. Through a wholesale deal, this book was just sitting there from a probate. A guy it's like died. God's intervention. And so it. this just magically popped in there. All right. It's called How Real Estate Fortunes Are Made from George Bockel. This is a book from 19. I've used this example so many times, but there's nobody else in the wholesaling game that has a book that's this old in wholesaling. 1972, not even that old. And he dedicated right? it to his son, too. Shout out to his son. It's kind of cool. And so George Bockel, my man, right? If you ever uh, look out here, it's just. He basically gives you an outline of how to make a fortune in real estate, right? He talks about wholesaling. He talks about subject two. He talks about how to find subject two deals and do making advertisements for them, how to find deals, increase all the, um, how to sell your deals, how to borrow money, like simple stuff, but he has a lot of wholesaling and here's a lot of great stuff. And if you ever look in the back of this, right, there's a lot of cool stuff. Um, if I go to page 126 to 130, one of my favorite pages on here. He calls it entrepreneur leverage. Buying wholesale and selling retail. Another way of merchandising real estate. But I thought somebody just invented that right now. Guys, it's, you know what? If your parents picked up the books, if my parents picked up this book. This is his quote. Because he learned this from some guy from the 30s and 20s. Buying wholesale and selling retail is the American tradition. He basically explains this new entrepreneurship leveraging opportunity with no risk at all. And it's so funny. Um, I love that like, book, man. It's one of the greatest reads. I don't think you can get it online. You can't. Someone do some research and do it. What we're telling you, the scrolls have always been there. It's you got to take the action. If if your parents picked this up in the whenever, 70s, 80s, even 90s, 80s, 90s, this would be the easiest way to make a billion dollars. I'm telling so, you right now. You, what do you think Grant Cardone, all they pick up books like this, they read because the information wasn't really out. This was a gold mine just sitting there. It was available to everybody. You go to the library and get it for free. I'm saying we're the exact same thing. I, it's, it's a little bit of a struggle when you start like anything else should be, but you're going to look back on this moment in 2024 and go, man, I made that decision. Here's the thing is we have a lot of people coming in the wholesaling. The difference is it's only going to work for the people that actually apply the right principles, the fundamentals like we talk about, and put in the hard work. And the reality is most people don't have good fundamentals and they won't do the hard work. So stop worrying about all these people coming in. Just focus on you. Put on your blinders and go to work. I'm telling you, it's all out there for you. When I started in 2003, saturated, everybody does it. I was told it's going to be shut down. It's going to be illegal. Here I am 21 years later, and we're still talking about the saying dang thing. Kind of funny. He, he talks about a salesman. That's it's old school. A salesman who consistently earned $25 to $30,000 a year working under this buy and sell profit arrangement. Like it's not, he called it wholesale buy, but like it, it wasn't like a name of it. 
but like 30 grand in 1972, that's six figures, right? Yeah. And it's Buy it's so lot. funny how he does this. Um, it, it's it's so cool. But like, here, let me read one more part here. You know, the most direct source for getting leads to buy real estate is to advertise it in the local newspaper under the column marked "Real Estate Wanted." The ad usually reads like this: "I did that by we the way. We pay cash for land, homes, and investment properties of all kinds. No waiting. Get your cash as soon as you present us with a clear title, name, phone." Crazy, right? And so what I mean by this is there's these ancient scrolls um, and there's way older books. There's books from the 80s and 90s about whole thing we have behind us. It's a cool little library. But what, what I want you to understand is using old school methods now that really the whole thing gurus forgot to mention to anyone with these old tactics, no one's doing them because nobody knows that they even existed. And so this is the ancient Kung Fu scrolls. Um, that have changed the way we look at wholesaling, but these are methods that aren't talked about at all anymore. And you start learning how to do this, you're going to get very, very successful because no other wholesaler is doing this. Because no guru even thinks that there's gurus today that said they invented subject two, or they're the first guys to start doing subject twos. When like we got, we got we got a guy like this talking about lease options in the in the sixties. You know, oh, I know a guy in the twenties, oh, thirties doing forever. that. And so the the sad part is nobody. Nobody, and I mean no one, talking about how old wholesaling real estate goes. And so when I get someone saying wholesaling is going to get banned, all stuff's been going on forever. It's been going okay. on forever, guys. And the, a lot of these these books do teach the old school. That's this is what I've been brought up on. But today, I love the speed, the data. Like, don't get all this stuff's amazing, and you'll be the first one there. But if you can't make an impact on your seller, you'll be the first and last one there because they're not going to go with you. So many wholesalers are so transactional. You know how many people pitch me a property every day, every week? They don't even try. They think sending me an SMS text is going to get me to close. And guys, I love AI. I think it's going to help um, put our data together. But come on, guys. You, you got to be the dumbest wholesale in the world. I think AI is going to do everything from A to Z wholesaling for you. It's you that makes the difference. That's why you get paid so much in wholesaling. But you don't get paid unless you can close the deal. And you have to learn this. So many people go, you got to learn the sales process. No, you don't. You, you've got to be educated in wholesaling and you've got to guide your clients through. But remember, you don't have 300 people walking through the door to buy a car. It's not a sales process. You find and locate the right motivated sellers and you guide them down the journey. And if you don't stumble too much and you, you know how to handle objections and you know how to answer them, you get to the finish line, which is a wholesale deal. So, so funny. Um, you can't even get these books um, for less than they're, they're going for hundreds of dollars and they used to be like $15 books, but because kind of we, we kind of pushed the demand on it. It's pretty funny. Um, but what I'm saying is divine invention comes in weird ways. And we learned new methods to reading that book from the ancient scrolls um, that just, we started doing it. It worked very well. And, and what I mean by this is just old school stuff works, right? Um, and this isn't particularly from the book. Some of these are in the books, but like trying for dollars, sticky notes, bandit signs, digital bandit signs, cold calling, guerrilla marketing, old school stuff that used to work in the early 2000s are making the comeback because anything that happened before the guru's guru learned wholesaling, they don't remember. They don't know about it. And they're not students of the game. All right? They don't talk to older wholesalers like me and you, right? Like, like people that are like in their 80s that wholesaled. You're not old. And so- no, we're talking to people that are older that did it. Yeah. And because the, the guru's guru didn't know that, he don't teach it on to his, the guru now. And so it's just, they don't know about it, right? And the cool part is, you know, we're students of the game. We read up, like we look at old, this is why we're the only wholesalers on YouTube that teach about reverse drawing for dollars, sticky notes, all these things. And one thing that inspired me for digital bandit signs where you did this in, in your fishing forms, but George Bockle in that book from the 70s said, hey, go to a, the newspaper listing under real estate wanted and just post this. And the funny part is if you do that on Craig, like that exact thing on Craigslist ads today, 50 Works. years later, you'll get wholesaling inbound leads to you. He literally, he literally says, put your, put your name and put your phone number on the back. Did he say just post it once and never no, do it again? No, he makes the postings, right? Yeah. It's, it's, and so like old school stuff works, guys and gals. I, I hate to say it. it works. I, I think we're so busy trying to find the latest, greatest gadgets that a lot of us are overlooking the fundamentals of wholesaling. And I'm telling you, 
Uh, everybody wants to go out and get the latest, greatest, best-selling book. Guys, there's th thousands of years all the way back to the Bible. There's amazing lessons you can learn from people. And the one thing you'll learn, they have the exact same problems you have today. So you can either learn from history or you can stumble through it the hard way. It's up to you. It's really cool. If you can find some of the old Carlton sheets, some of the original stuff, amazing stuff. Like really creative I will give him credit for being an outside the box type of thinker. And it's, he took massive risk. And that's what I love about it today. And guys, new and old, it works. If you just do new and you're going to be transactional and you think you're going to text and just automate AI, your closing ratio is going to be so bad. It's going to drive you out of the business. So learn the fundamentals because most of you are swinging the bat at the wrong type of sellers. And that's, that's why you're so frustrated. So to these methods we teach, it's our Freelson course, freelson.com. We talk about a lot, but just go there. Next part here, this is super important, but you must treat your cash buyers like sellers. Your guru's guru learned back in the day to treat your cash buyer like trash and treat your seller like they are the, the most amazing person in the world, right? Mm -hmm. And like I've always said, I said this six years ago um, to everyone, but I started saying on YouTube like four years ago. Wholesaling real estate is a, it's a circle. It, it's literally a circle where it goes from basically low interest rate, not low interest rates, but like real estate prices going up. And when prices go up, it's hard to find sellers. Buyers are easy. Mm -hmm. Then real estate kind of has this weird point where like prices go down, but like we don't really know. It's, it's a hard point because prices go down, but the sellers still think their house worth a million dollars, but the buyers are smart. And then there's the next part, part in the circle where prices actually start going down more and then the sellers start panicking because they don't want their house to go down more and they'll sell like that and the buyers will still buy. And then there's the next point on the circle, which is the best part where prices now start going up and the sellers still think their house is trash and they'll get rid of it and your buyers will buy it up because they know it's going up. And then you get back to the point where prices keep going up and it's easy to sell to a buyer and then the sellers start re realizing the prices go up and it's this little circle. I don't care what you do. I don't care the past 80, 90 years of wholesaling. It happens in that exact circle. And we're kind of at the point now where prices are going down. But now we're at that point where it might be hitting back up or it might keep going down. We don't know. Well, I think it's going to kind of stabilize because we're kind of at that turning point on the circle. But we're going to have that. And then it's going to be that point where real estate prices start going back up. Now, is this when interest rates start getting cut hard? Who knows? Um, there always could be crazy events happening. But uh, we're at that point now. And so your guru only learned at the point where it was really easy, easy to sell your wholesaling deal and you treat your buyer like trash. And never really learned in the processes like you, you know, in the early 2000s where you got to treat your buyers good because sellers are going to be easy and sellers have become a lot easier to deal with now. Now, are they the suit? No, they're, they're not the easiest in the world. They've gotten a lot easier. And so treat your buyer like a seller. A lot of you guys will follow up with your sellers. You'll say hi to them. You'll be sweet to them. You'll say, how's your day today? What are your goals? But when it comes to a buyer, like, I have a deal. Buy it or not. It's like, there's some salesmanship. Like, we're selling a contract. Like, when you're selling something, you got to be a little nice, right? Yeah, I mean, you got to have a deal and you got to do it. But like, for the long, for, really from 2014 to 22, this was the mentality everywhere. I was just like, man, this is going to blow up on you. And then most of the people that took those actions, they either had to reinvent their business and learn it the correct way, or they're out of business. And that seems to be the trend everywhere. And it's, guys, a lot of this is just common sense. You treat people like crap, they're not coming back to you. Now, I know not every cash buyer comes back to you, but good cash buyers do come back to you. I don't want them buying everything. But when things are tighter, you have to rely on them a little bit more. It takes more time. It takes much more convincing to do it. And you have to have a good deal and they've got to be confident in your ability. And if you're nasty to them, forget it. I don't, I mean, I guess the perfect snapshot during that time, you could do it, but like you're never going to build and they're constantly trying to find a new cash buyer to do it. If you don't have some true and tried buyers in your current markets and you don't treat them good, I'm not telling you to go on vacation. I'm not telling you to go on a cruise. You got to keep it business, but you got to be a human being. And just using, you already have the skill sets to learn to build rapport. It's really basic with sellers. Just be super mm -hmm. nice to them. 
be professional and give a clear cut presentation and give the facts. And then you cut all that stuff around. But the last thing you call a buyer, you go, man, it's right in this guy's buy zone. I know it. I go, man, but it, it went down real bad last time I talked to him. I don't care if you're giving it away. He or she ain't buying it from you True. because they don't like the way you treated them. Um, at one point when the market got absolutely nuts, they were teaching on how to get all the cash buyers, trick them and get them to the property and get them all the silent bid and bid out each other. And then what they do is take the last three ones that bid the highest and then you play games with them. Dude, that's the worst decision I think you can ever make. Now, you will make a little bit more money in the short term, but it's going to cost you a ton. Here's the difference between someone who runs a marathon in wholesaling and a sprinter. Sprinters always run out of gas and they go do other hobbies just like they did wholesaling. So if you want to be a marathon, listen to this. 21 years, I already have the track record for it. And I just don't want you to, if you want to run a hundred yard dash, I'm not the guy to teach you how to do it. Okay, go and do it. All right, so that, that's the point. Treat your buyers well, I promise you. When, when every wholesaler has a deal, they're going to go with the guy that treated them the best. Now, one of the most important points we got to make here is you got to put gas in the tank. Okay, listen up. Put gas in the tank. What I mean by this is you can't travel in your car without putting gas in the tank or an electric car, you can't charge it, right? Put gas in the tank. What I mean by this is if you want to travel, you're going to have to put gas in the vehicle so it has fuel. And so if you expect to make 100K in wholesaling, your vehicle to travel, you know, to let's say 10, 100 miles, mm -hmm. there's going to have to be gas. If there's no gas in the tank, you're not going to travel there. And people expect to travel from New York to LA on one tank of gas. And they're like, Zach, how do I travel from, let's do this. How do I travel from LA to Florida in a car with $30 of gas or, you know, two tanks of gas? It's like, and you're in a truck. Uh, that's not possible. <laughs> what do you mean it's not possible? How do I also do that in four hours? It's like, some of you guys ask me this, these questions. It's like, what? What? And it sounds crazy to think until you like, like actually do it. And what I'm saying is you got to go get your own gas. And what I mean by this is gas is two ways, right? Either you drill your own gas and you purify it and you, you refine it and you go in your own backyard and drill it, or you go to the pump and buy it. Mm -hmm. You buy, you pay a person to do that, right? Now, could you drill your own gas? Yes, that's possible for free. Um, but most people just buy it at the pump. And what I mean by this is, Either you put gas in the tank by yourself, by you actually pouring in time and effort and energy, a lot of time. or you kind of buy the gas, which is going to be paying for a list, paying for skip tracing, all these things. It's your choice. One's going to take a lot more time and it's going to be a lot more effort intensive, but it is possible. It definitely is. And it's not, and it's probably one of the best options for beginners out there, but you have to find a way to put gas in the tank. And so you cannot get results without actually putting in your marketing in. So you, you can't get rich without putting in enough cold calls or texts or direct mail pieces or anything. You've got to put gas in that tank. And if you don't put gas in the tank, you're not going to travel. And so either you do it, you're by yourself, you do it for free, which teach at realcy.com, or you can pay some software that's not make it a little easier. It's up to you which one you want to do. But I'm just saying that you have to actually put the effort in. You cannot get good at cold calling by only doing 10 cold calls in a month. Just that's not enough gas to put in the tank. That's the point here. And the really important part is you, you can't cheat your way also. Okay. I think a lot of wholesalers expect this, that they can cheat and, and get to the, to, to the success, right? Oh, if I can put a little bit of gas and then put water in the tank and that's really going to get me there. It, yeah. You can't, oh, this guy said this magic ser serum. If I put a little bit of the serum in the gas tank, all I have to do is put one, one thing, one gallon and I can travel thousands of miles. Oh, really? That, that's that's quite the claim. Mm -hmm. See if that works. It's it's nuts, right? It, it ain't going to work, buddy. Or okay. I got a shortcut from LA to Florida. Uh, yeah, it, it's a little shortcut. It's, 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 you got to dig, though. It's the same it's distance. Like, like you, you listen to the same amount of miles from LA to Florida. But the problem is a lot of you buy into like, oh, I got a shortcut. It's I, I can cut the, t uh, the distance in half. You can't. The distance is always going to be the distance. It's called hard work. And if you don't go on that journey, you're not going to get the end prize, the destination to be successful. But what you do is you trick your mind when you take a shortcut. Someone says, hey, 
I got a way you don't even have to do like wholesaling. It's even easier to make more money. You pay them. And then after a few months, you find out the shortcut's not there. And then you got to start all over. And that's what we're trying to teach you here with this. It's the same distance. When Trust me, there's hundreds of years to tell you the same distance. Now, the vehicle you take sometimes a little bit different. I'm okay with that. But I'm telling you, we're all going to have to take the same journey. There is no shortcut. Anyone tells you the shortcut in wholesaling, run, run for the hills. It drives me nuts, but guys, can't shoot your way. There's no shortcut in a marathon. If there's a marathon, it's 26.2 miles. There's no shortcut. Okay. The path is there to the marathon, right? Mm -hmm. You can't go in a taxi and drive it. You'll be caught and you'll, you'll, you're out. Right. And so a lot of people think in a marathon, there's a little shortcut, right? Maybe if I, uh, I, I eat this special food, I can, it, it ain't going to work. Okay. There's no shortcut. You got to run the marathon. And a lot of you guys are expecting, oh, you know, if I just run faster without pacing myself, then I'm, it'll be good. Right. I'm going to cold call 15 hours a day for a week straight. It don't work like that. Okay. Cause you, you will get burnt out. And so a lot of people think, oh, if I just sprint the first 10 miles of the marathon, yeah. it'll be, oh yeah. Sprint at full speed, 10 miles. People can barely do that for half a mile without like, and so, yeah, it, it, it sounds good to sprint for 10 miles or sprint the whole, no, there's no shortcut to it. It's 26.2 miles. That's the length. There's no shortcut to it. Okay. There's no special way of walking. That's going to make it easier for you. Right. A lot of people, no speed walking doesn't count. Uh, no, there, there's no shortcut guys. You either, you do, it's the distance. And most of you aren't getting past the first mile. I'm going to be honest with you. No, like yeah, yeah, run. Boom. So I'm just telling you, like, just, I want you to visualize it and understand it. So when you see it come up, because guys, listen, I've fallen for this. And this is the reason I'm kind of teaching you it. That I have never, ever in my 21 years found a shortcut in wholesaling. It doesn't exist. There's not a secret. There's no shortcut. And there's no new strategy that makes everything so much easier. Now, the data and the speed, sure. But the journey's still the same. And so, guys, there's no shortcut. You have to do the work. You have to get the results. And that is how you make money. Guys, if you want to learn exactly how to do this, go to our free wholesaling course. It's called freewholesaling.com. We teach you how to get started wholesaling real estate up to date right now. But there's no way of cheating this game. You put in the work, you get the results. So guys, go to freewholesaling.com. You'll learn how to wholesale real estate absolutely for free. We do teach you how to do it because frankly, it's, it's the only free course on the internet about how to wholesale real estate. So what we're going to do is answer some questions you guys have and see how I can help you guys out wholesaling real estate. So uh, shout out to everyone on here. Uh, Caleb says, why are all the cash buyers like in their late 30s and 40s just grumpy? Uh, they got money and they're older. That's just usually older guys with money. They're all usually grumpy. That's why, why That's why you got to, you know, you got to build some rapport. You don't have to go super deep, but you can't be mis Mr. and Mrs. Transactional. Work Simple like as that. that. Yeah. Nope. Oh. But yeah, it's it's funny. Shout out to Caleb. He's doing he's doing deals. He, he's the man. <laughs> uh, King Prince says, "My guru didn't tell me we were allowed to pull government lists to find leads. I had to learn from a friend who sent me your course. Now I'm looking at everything different." Hey, you go pay your guy nine grand to. Yeah, I can't say it. Um, you pay him nine. You pay him nine, whatever grand, whatever, and you expect the world. Then you realize, no, he's just trying to teach me how to spend 15 grand a month on this stupid little new thing. It's, that's how they all work, man. I, I've been in every single course, every single community. People have given me access to every single one. I, I know what all of them are. They all suck. Okay. I'll tell you, just anyone that's paid for it and then gone to freelson.com is like the same exact thing. It's sad, but it's absolutely the truth. And so, yeah, don't be paying for no guru thing. I'm telling you, not worth it. Uh, Adrian said, proud to say I got my first deal because of this free information. Thank you, Rick and Zach. Awesome. Thank you so much, Adrian. I appreciate that. Great that job. makes my day. Love seeing that. Love seeing people uh, becoming successful, right? I, I think so many people go out here. And, uh, it, it's I'd love to see success stories. I think I was showing everyone um, the other day about that. But uh, yeah, we got a lot of people out here uh, doing well. You know, I want to give a shout out here. I always love going to Facebook group and just seeing some success successful people. Uh, Dion out here. What do you get here? You got two grand. That's awesome. Shout out to Dion there. 2300 bucks. Houston. Love to see that stuff. Um, quick shout out to him. Uh, we got a little 10 grand from Mildred here. Um, shout out to all my people out here doing well. Who we got here? Jonathan. Jonathan got a nice check here. What is that? 12? 
of no what whoa. Thirty two. And guys, like we don't ask anybody to post here. They do it just Mildred another eighteen to thank us. I, I find so many the of the, Sean thirty five the right. coaching courses they like Shout you, to my you must get a testimonial immediately and you must capture it. We don't we don't we're never gonna make you do that. If you feel gracious enough to do it, put it up there and we give you the praise. Like honestly, it's your hard work that does it. We we just point you in the right direction, but you gotta do the hard work. There's no substitute for it. Oh, yeah. And so uh, if you want to hop on, talk to us one-on-one -on -one for free, all you need to do out here is go to Zach, uh, go to the featured. I usually pin it right there. Click that. Click the streamer link, and boom, you'll be able to talk to us. 130K. That's free. insane. It's a lot of people. Not it's a crazy. Lot. It's, a, it's a lot of people. So uh, shout to them. Uh, let me go here. Let's see. All right, so uh, right here, facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash hustling houses for real. That's how you join the Facebook group. So uh, let's talk to everyone, see how we can help you out and uh, make you a better wholesaler. So, uh, uh, Evan, how are you, man? Evan, man, he's, he's fired up. Awesome. Oh, yeah. um, up? Long time no see, man. I know, right? Um, so I spoke to Rick on, I think, Tuesday or Monday um, about some cold calling stuff, and he told me to refer to you. Um, yeah. When it got into kind of the nitty gritty, when it came like the KPIs and the numbers mm -hmm. um, about the cold calling. So I wanted to ask a quick question. Um, so right now I am doing, um, I, I used the dialer. I stopped using the dialer. I took a break and then I, I got back to it and I took to hold something again. So I'm, I'm using spreadsheets and Google voice. And so I'm getting about, I'm calling about 60 numbers an hour. Um, but I'm calling the first three numbers that I get for each lead. So in total, I'm calling about 20 leads per hour. Is that a good number or should I be doing more? 20 leads, 20 is not bad an hour. I mean, okay. it, it depends if you're having conversations or not, but if you're having conversations then yeah, I'd say it's great. Right. And so I, when I'm doing, when I pull, you know, I'm using the driving for dollars list. Um, I, I have maybe like two or three conversations a day. Um, and I'm calling for probably about two to three hours. Um, and then if I, like, I just recently pulled the government list, um, a, a, violations from like three months ago all the way to now and i've had i've actually had a lot of bad numbers and so i'm about to start doing going doing going into deeper research with like um true people search and um uh cyber background checks i've just used everything from um from batch skip tracing but i i've been watching a bunch of y'all's content the past couple of days just look, getting deeper into the leads for free um and it seems like you just have to dig deeper to get the you know to maybe get the contact information for a lead is that right or should like how long should I be taking if I'm using free sources? You think? I mean, you get the phone numbers from cyber background checks or true people search. Mm -hmm. Simple. I mean, it's pretty quick right. to do it. Um, and then you got the dmzac.com if you want to do like the cheaper, a quicker way. But like yeah. cyber background checks pretty quick if you know how to do it the right way. So okay. Copy, paste, copy, paste, copy, paste. Okay, sweet. Um, and then I'm about to move to Tennessee. And so I'm, I'm just going to start virtually wholesaling right now there. And oh, um, are you done with I, college? Pardon? Done with college? No, I, I already graduated with my fiance. She's going to be going to a grad school out there. So we're just going to move out there. After Where? The uh, Knoxville. So, okay. University of Tennessee? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. UT. Knoxville's yes, a great sir. market, man. I'm excited. I'm really excited. Um, but I, I've been trying to pull their government list. And I know, you know, you, you'll eventually get it with persistence. And so I, I my next step is to call them. But I got online. I went to the clerk's, um, you know, website and everything, and it shows something about like a private privacy policy and like you have to be a verified um, Tennessee citizen in order to get it. And I'm like, what is that? Like, I don't. I I'm figuring my next step is to call them, but I'm curious before I call do them. That. Okay, call them. You just got to figure it out. I, I said you got to get around their privacy policy. This is where you get resourceful as a wholesaler. So. Okay. You get it, overcome resistance with persistence. So right. you're a smart guy. Just keep plugging away through it. Absolutely. Okay. You got it. Sweet. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Okay, right. man. Appreciate Thanks, it. Seven. Yeah, absolutely. Boom. Shout out to Devin there. John, what is up? Hey, guys. So I finally figured out how to get on this live. Uh, All right. Nonetheless, non nonetheless guys, uh, hope you guys are doing okay. Uh, just had a couple questions. Um so I've been going through freewholesaling.com, the whole thing. Uh, I've been absolutely obsessed with it. You guys are, you know, absolutely great, great professionals. Um, just had a question. Should I start 
building a robust cast buyers list before I started contacting any sellers. Uh, I'm, I'm doing, I'm not doing virtual. I'm doing in person or should I start contacting sellers first? I got a full government list. I got a few thousand people to call and then, uh, or a couple hundred people to call in the past 30 days. And then, uh, I got a couple hundred driving for dollar leads that I picked up in this weekend. So just had a, just had that general question. So should I have a, should I start contacting buyers first or should I start contacting or contacting sellers first? What market? Uh, Bloomington, Illinois, central Illinois. So it's a pretty good market, 130,000 people and medium home price is about 230. Have you done any wholesaling deals there? No, no. I'm actually just hitting the ground running. Um, been in sales. I would for about say a let's do buyers first. Okay. Let's figure out where they want to buy and what properties they want to buy. Okay. Gotcha. You, you can good. never get, you can never hurt yourself getting a cash buyers list. So yeah. Some people like to run and do it without it, but like my, my answer is always going to be simultaneous. Like it's just because if you run and you do all the marketing driving for dollars and you get a, you stumble across a great deal and that's how it always works out, then you're so much more stressed to get the cash buyers. But some people obsess over the cash buyers and they don't do the driving for dollars. So my answer is going to be both. You, you can't get hurt by doing both. Don't just dedicate the cash buyers. I would do them simul simultaneously. Okay, gotcha. And I work a full time job at home. Um, so essentially, I should just manage my time to set up a time where I just yeah. build that list. And then set up a time where I'm actually contacting the seller. That, that's a great opportunity. Not everybody has that. So when you have to go to a nine to five to the office, you're severely restricted in some of the times. But remember, you get 24 hours in a day. We don't have rules in wholesaling, you create your rules. So we don't operate with a nine to five mentality. So you have more than enough time. Perfect. And remember, I did it with a full time job. That that's what I did. I did, and I had to go to work. So, you you got a huge head start. So you you've got it. Just keep doing what you're doing. Good. And I had one. Uh, can I ask one more question? Sure. No. Uh, <laughs> you're good. Yeah. All right. Well, one last thing that I had was uh, this is kind of like a nuanced thing. So so for fi cyber background check, uh, when you search up somebody's name or address you get multiple numbers. So do you guys mainly look at the, do you mainly just pull the first name that you see and the first number that you see, or do you look at the data and see when that number was first there in the first place, when it was registered and just formulate, you know, the, the actual number that you, that you should actually call, or should you call multiple numbers per lead? I'll do the first, I do all the mobiles. If there's mobiles on there, any mobile one, I'll do it. Cyber background checks cool. Cause it gives you a date. When it was last accessed, which is kind of cool too. Um, but I usually like the first two, three, maybe if I want to go nuts. Um, up to you. Okay, gotcha. And I'm getting this mobile home under contract uh, as well. Dirt cheap. Comps are at 50 to 60. Um, yeah, like 10 grand. Like that. That's possibly a good deal, right? If, if, if the land is there, if the actual land is included in the deal. Yeah. That, I mean, that, yeah. That's Buyers don't like buying land just to buy land. There are land buyers, but like land doesn't, you can't really flip land. Uh, I mean, you can, but like, it's not like a bigger thing and land doesn't pay you rent every month. So th that's always the issue. It's like, oh, I got six acres on. That's great. Unless you're farming on it. Like it's, it's not like a, in my opinion, as an investor, it's not a crazy ROI. Gotcha. Um, so I, a lot of people think because it has three acres, that makes it, this insane thing you're still gonna have a tax bill it really doesn't in my opinion okay yeah by if mobile home i meant like trailer home like with the garage uh yeah so, if it, if, so if the land's owned underneath that that's great yeah that, that's Love right because you can generate cash and it's yeah just look at the numbers and you you know you've got to answer it is it a good deal does it make sense because so, remember all real estate is local perfect sounds good guys well thank you so much for your help and uh yeah that kind of answered my my questions that I had. Thank you. All right. Appreciate awesome. it, man. Thanks, John. Oh, then uh shout out here to uh, Jay. What is up, man? Hey guys. Can you hear me? Loud and clear. How are you? What you up to? I'm good. I'm good. How about you guys? How are you guys doing? Every Fantastic. day above ground's an amazing day. Awesome. So yeah, uh, I just have a question. Uh, I have a virtual wholesale deal in Austin and um, the seller got COVID because he just came back from Nevada. 
so I just want to ask, like, what are the other ways where I can get the photos of the property? Okay, uh, you can, do you want to pay for it or do you want to do it for free? I mean, if I can pay for it and quicker, I mean, yeah, I can go Depends to what that you're gonna do. So if the seller's virtual and you're virtual, either you can pay a guy to go out here and take pictures of the house. <clears throat> you can partner up with someone that's going to take pictures, but they're going to want to stake in the deal. Uh, mm -hmm. It's up to you which one you want to do. But I mean, there's multiple ways mm -hmm. to skin the cat here. You got to get pictures of the house though. I think he's, he's okay. worried about the COVID aspect. Listen, is that what you're worried about? Because because there's a condition. I uh, no, not really. Because uh, right. the seller, seller like the seller said, he had COVID. He said, right now. Yeah, he said the seller's got yeah, COVID. Yeah, the, the seller got COVID. Yeah, just so, so wear a mask. Whoever takes the pictures, that's yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah, he hey. said that he can take the photos, but it will be like in a week because he's still in quarantine right now, and he's also like fighting cancer and stuff. So wait, uh, because he has the sickness, I can't say the word on YouTube. Is he in? Um, is he in the property? Oh, I'm so sorry. Property? No, uh, he's not. He's, is this uh, the is actually vacant. Is this March of 2020? Like uh, he can't go in the house. He's sick, love. He can't get over there. Uh he's sick. Uh he got you know the sickness and stuff, and he said that he wanted to take a rest. Okay, for if he's that sick, then I guess so. Does he have a buddy okay. that can do it for him? No, I also asked him that if he what? do have someone who can take photos. Yeah. Will he give you he access? Will he give you access or somebody you send their access to the property? Yes, he can. Okay, right. there's your answer. You, you can find somebody okay. locally. I assume you don't have boots on the ground there. And honestly, you know, 50, 75 bucks should get it done. You, you, you got to get an idea what the property looks like. Okay. And here's a clue. I, I assume you have some sort of reference to like the outside of the property or the condition of the property. Yeah, I do. And what do you, what do you assess it as? So it needs like mid rehab. So the property has like 1,040 square feet. Mm -hmm. So based on your formula, it's around like 25 to 30,000, right? So, and the ARV for that property is around 350,000 and mm -hmm. they locked it up at 250. So it, yeah. it, just uh, it doesn't need rehab. like ma major repair to it. Well, actually. you have to verify it. And that's the challenge of virtual. So yeah. Yeah, you got to get right. someone that, take a quick peek for you. Um, mm -hmm. If you don't have local contacts, you just got to hire someone to uh, just take pictures. You can find ex realtors. Uh, there's okay. plenty of people looking like for quick jobs, but do not pay them until they give you the photo. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. I actually submitted it to, to uh, sell my paper because I wanted to JV with you guys. It's locked up. I submitted it. Yeah, it's locked up. Okay. Pass yeah, through the writing. What city? Yeah, actually, we already have like one deal that I'm working with Kira. You know Kira, right? On our team? So, yeah, Kira, uh, what's the name? Uh, Staggers. Okay. Yeah, it's in North Carolina. It's a land deal, actually. And we're currently oh. now waiting for the highest buyer for it. We already have buyers for it, but we're looking for someone who's going to pay the highest one. So I hope it will close. Uh, I'm not really after the assignment for that deal. I'm actually after like the Clipwood Rick Plus because you yeah, guys you said it, you know. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, you like, can make yeah a brand that's what I'm after for, for you know. So yeah, just be cooperative. So it, like, three ways. Help, help them out because yeah, I'm the more you guys work together, the better we all do. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Though. Awesome. Yeah, you just you got to get yeah. verification on that property. So uh, if if you work um, with us through sellmypaper.com if we can get somebody on the team to go out there and look. But sometimes you just got to kind of bite the bullet, but you got to verify like what the condition okay. of the property is. Cause yeah. we really don't know we have a deal until we kind of get some sort of estimate. Number True. And how we do that, you got to get you just remember resourcefulness guys. I'm going to go over over and over again, just cause you don't have a lot of money. You, you got to learn, you have to be resourceful. If you have money, you still have to be resourceful. So, this is the, the the common thing. So you got a few obstacles. If you can overcome okay. those obstacles, great things can happen. I agree. Okay. So I can just get a like contractor or something like that, right? We just go there and see see the property or like any boots on the ground and stuff. Just be resourceful. And okay. the, the resourceful requires someone to take pictures. 
if you get it done free or you get it paid, the, the question is, will you get it done? That's your decision. You have to make it. Okay. Okay. All right. Gotcha. Okay. Thank you it's so not much. complicated. You can do it. I believe in you, Jay. Thank you so much. And I, I hope we can JV on this one. <laughs> oh, Me yeah. too, buddy. Thank Thanks you. for sending us a deal. Appreciate that. Yes, sir. And if Thank you guys you. have a deal, just go to sellmypaper.com to get Flip the Rick Plus for free. Bam. Because we have our uh, live event coming up in April. We're excited about that. And uh, yeah, we're, we're pumped up for it. Flip the Rick Plus. Shout out to everyone in there. Um, start sending us more deals. We want more people in there. And you can do it for free by just giving us a JV deal. That's the point of Flip the Rick Plus. Kind of making something pretty cool to push you guys to send us JV deals. And so uh, shout out to everyone on there. Sunmypaper.com. You have a JV deal. You want to send it to us. Uh, we got everyone working on there hard. Uh, remember, we're doing 46, 47 states. So it's kind of hard for me to um, figure out every single person on the team. There's multiple people per state. Um, but yeah, shout out to whoever is working with us on, it. So, um, on our team. So Kira, thanks. Appreciate that. Um, all right. So uh, let's go to the next person here. We got uh, Sam. What is up, man? Hey, how you doing? I'm good. How are Can you? Hear me? Loud and okay, clear. Uh, yeah. So, uh, yeah, I was looking at one of uh, Rick's videos about pre foreclosures, and he was he mentioned how easy they were to find them, but I can't seem to find to find them for uh, my market. I'm in uh, I'm in uh, the market of Atlanta, or I ran Atlanta. I'm in uh, this county of Hall County, and I called, and they had to, they had told me that everything will all these pre foreclosure listings would be uh, on newspaper, right? So. You know, they, they, they say that they don't really have a listing or anything of pre foreclosures online, and I've tried looking for it, but I can't seem to find them. Um, they, 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 oh, they talk, I'm sorry? Are you local? Yeah, I, this is basically my backyard. I'm just all local. So, go to the courthouse uh, and call them. No, well, I've, I've called and I've tried and I've told them, well, can I go to the courthouse and see? If, if yeah, if y'all have any sort of like listing or addresses for pre foreclosures, and they say they don't have any, um, Sam. it's Sam, a, Sam, it, it's a public lawsuit. No, wait, wait, wait. Okay, so, 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 Sam, this is your problem. You're asking for a pre foreclosure list. Pre foreclosure list is a marketing term. Does that make sense? Okay. It's like so, going to, literally. It's like going to court and say, "Can I get the Zach Ginn list?" They're gonna look at you like, "What is wrong with this guy?" So pre foreclosure is not a. So Sam, when did you go through freeholding.com? Yeah, uh, no. I've gone through the, through freeholding.com and uh, I got talked about tax liens and. Awesome. Did uh, you go through the foreclosure part? Uh, I did. Yes, sir. You did. What did I say on the pre foreclosure part of how to pull them? You go through your county uh, clerk's office. And what, what and what do you look up? Oh, uh, would it be, uh, I guess, tax delinquents or tax liens? Tax uh, liens are not pre foreclosures. So in freeholsling.com, my free wholesaling course, I know you haven't been through it in a while. I can tell. Just saying that nicely. When you go through the pre foreclosure section, I show you how to pull pre foreclosures. When you go in there, it'll say you need to go to the courthouse. And I don't say go and look for the pre foreclosure section because there's no pre foreclosure section. There's either a list pendants, a notice of default section, or a notice of foreclosure section. Usually only those three. That is what the court officer understands. Not a, okay. not, not a, there's not a special water shut off list from the utility. No, it's, yeah. it, no. Okay. If, if you it, ask for a tax delinquency, they're all going to stare at they're you. They're like, too. What, what are you talking about? Every one of them is so, but I've never, code names. I've never sent in the course for you to go and go to ask for pre foreclosures. In there, the three ones, you got to go through the course, man. You have questions about pre foreclosures. Go through the section, but notice of default, list pendants, or notice of foreclosure. Okay. That's it. And so you ask for those records, and they'll happily give it to you. And remember, they're, they're public lawsuits. By law, they have to disclose it to the public. There is no privacy policy. There's nothing. <clears throat> and I'm almost guaranteeing you can get them online, for too. For Corey, he says his is the notice of trustee sale. It's whatever it is. But, man, you, you I get people that come up to the court. I say, Give me a list of the probates. They're like, what are you talking about? Yeah. You, you have to be, you have to go through the course, man. Cause in the course, it shows you everything you need to know. Um, they're looking at you crazy cause you're asking them crazy questions that they don't know. And, and when you give people an out to give you a no, they'll just give you a no because it's less work for them to do. 
and they're punching a time clock. And I'm just telling you, you have to rise above and you got to get, so you got to just go through the course. It's, it's okay. But like, you're going to have to get very specific. The course is big. And you're going to have to educate yourself because if you just start asking for general terms, you're going to get general responses and you're going to get nowhere. So it's, are, are you clear on like, you've got to find the exact name of the list in your county. Now there's 3,200 counties means that can't go through every county and do it for you. You're going to have to do the work. So you're just, you're, you're taking a general term and now you're going to a court, which is extremely specific. And the lady looks on her roster. She goes, Nope, no pre foreclosures. I can't help you. And that's what they're doing to you. Like, and guess what? You probably hung up or moved on and go, okay, well, yeah, that's it. It's fine. Just guys, most of the questions you ask us, will be in it. it's the reason we created free wholesaling.com if your questions go back to the course and look at it man and just get resourceful but like I, I listen if i was there at the courthouse i go listen where's the list of properties where the banks are taking them back and the homeowners uh the defendant and the banks the well, plaintiff even, e yeah even easier I, i'm trying to find court records where the bank is trying to take the property back because the person's not paying their mortgage yeah i mean if like, you oh that's that. the notice to default because they're default on their thing yeah. I, i'm just telling you man like I'm not saying this to like harp on you, but I'm harping the people that watch this that are doing what you're doing. You, you just, you got to go through the course, man. And if you have a question about it, you go watch it again. The point of it, you, the course is a live thing. You got to go back and look at it. So uh, go try that. I guarantee you'll find it. All right. Yeah. I appreciate it, man. Um, We're not ragging on you. Same, I, just get, get more clear and get, if you're serious about this, you'll go through it. But like, it, like we can't do everything. Like it's, Remember, this is the part I tell you about the hard work. It's not, it's not really exciting to go through the course, but Sam, how much did you pay us for the course? Uh, zero dollars. Okay, you're acting yeah, like you paid us zero dollars. So pretend you paid us 10 grand and pay attention. Right. Because this is okay. what the gurus try to tell you. They only pay attention if they pay you. No, it's up to you. Are it's you going to pay right. attention? Yes or no? Do it. It's up to you. It's all there. Yes, I promise you. If you paid five grand, I think you'd go back to the pre-foreclosure part and watch it though. Maybe yeah, I need to take a vote. Maybe if we charge I mean, five grand Sam, for I, I, I'll give you my Venmo. You can give me five grand if that's going to make you pay attention. I'll do that if you want. Oh, just take it seriously. You got it. it. Makes you feel better. You got it, man. You got this, man. All right. I appreciate it, guys. I'll definitely okay, call man. in and try that and see what they say. So I, I appreciate do it. Do it. You. Don't try it. Do it. You know exactly what it's to do. It. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay, man. See you. And guys, if you feel like you you want some money for frillsing.com, just send me some Super Bowl tickets. 50 yard line. If you, if, if you really want to get some skin in the game, sure. Just send it to us. You know, I, I, no, no Taylor I, Swift I, box I, there. I, nothing. No, but like, I mean, if that's what you want, <laughs> then go do it. Like you can, I, I'll, you know, I'm not gonna put my Venmo. I'm not a guru, but like, Hey, send me five grand or guys, if you really want, you know, get $5,000 out of your bank, light it on fire and pretend that's what you spent to pay for me. If that makes you feel good about yourself and they'll make you pay attention, then go do it. I, I, I don't care. I don't want your money, but like, what is it going to take for you to start paying attention? I have a free course. If you have a question about something about wholesaling, go through the course and rewatch it. I just, it, it bewilders me sometimes. Um, but like, uh, how do I pull probates? Well, go back to the probate section. That's it. It's yeah. a big course. That's the problem. You got, you got to keep reiterating it to yourself to do it. So, uh, yeah. Jaden, what is up? Hey guys, what's up? What's I'm up blessed. Man? How are you? Um, good. How are you? Good. So um, quick question. So I'm actually under 18 and my parents just started a uh, LLC and I'm, I've been watching you guys trying to get like as much information as possible. Uh, maybe try to be able to work with them a little bit like once I get to that, that point. But um, so I was going to ask Zach. So I know you obviously worked with your dad when you were under 18. So how did you do those deals? Like, did your dad just sign the contracts for you, or um, how did that work exactly? When he was 17, he signed the contracts, yes. Okay, gotcha. He did the work, well. I couldn't sign the yeah. contract at 17. Okay, yeah. cool. Thank you. And then another question. Um, so the LOC, our LOC is based in PA. So mm -hmm. um, do you have to, like, let's just say I wanted to do a virtual deal in uh, Georgia or whatever. Do I have to register that LLC in Georgia to do the wholesale deal there? Deal there, no. or if you sell okay. a if you sell a Coca Cola can on eBay to a guy in Wisconsin, 
Okay. You don't have to. Yeah, yeah, you don't have to register a, a Wisconsin LLC to do that. It would be exhausting gotcha. if we did that. It'd be insane. Yeah. Okay. And then one last question. Um, so the contracts, like when, so let's just say I have a purchase and sales agreement signed by um, seller and the buyer. Do I take that to the settlement company? And then when I get a um, assignment of purchase and sales, do I take that separately or do I take them at the same time? Separately. Okay. Contract first okay. and then the assignment, give that to the title company. Okay. Awesome. Give, give it to your title company as soon as possible. So you can mitigate any hiccups, you know, yeah. or surprises. And then usually you got to go out and find a cash buyer. Hopefully it's the next day, but you know, sometimes it takes yeah. a couple of weeks. And if you're really seasoned, and you know what you're doing? Like sometimes you can do them together, but like as a beginner, it's a rarity in the beginning. Okay. So, um, contract, then assignment of contract, and then your uh, settlement company um, should handle the whole thing for you. Okay. And make sure you got the right settlement company too. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Well, that answers all my questions, guys. So thank you very much. Awesome. Appreciate it. Have a good Have one. Have a blessed day. Boom. Also, make sure Jane goes to freelancing.com. <laughs> Eugene, what is up? Hey. Hey, what's up, Zach? I'm and good. How are you? What's going all on, right. man? Uh, so I, t I talked to you like, on Sunday, I believe. Um, yep. Zach, and you told me to pull uh, uh, code violations from the government. So I called the code violations. I called a couple offices uh, in Lehigh County, and they said to file a right to know, uh, which is like Freedom of Information Act, I guess. And then I also called about pre foreclosures, and they said that it's like a three hundred dollars a year like subscription, I guess, to get those records. So I wanted to ask, do you think that's worth it, or do you know how that might work? So, oh, Eugene just popped out. Well, I'll answer this for Eugene. Eugene, because they said it costs money for you to do that, it, it doesn't mean that that's the only option. And it seems like in your mind, you've chosen that's your only option. I would explore other things. Um, and so one thing I tell Eugene here is this is a huge little workaround, which we teach at freelancing.com. Go to the free course. Um, go to the court dockets. That, that's the best way to go around that. If you get a court dockets, you can copy the information in. And it literally shows you the scheduling of postings of court cases yeah. for no sort of faults, less pendants, things like that. Probates pop up on there. It just, they're trying to push you away by saying you need to spend money. But if you look at the dockets, you go in person sometimes. There's ways around this. You don't have to be spending money to learn wholesaling. You don't have to spend money to go get these lists. There are ways around it. But the problem is they say things and you automatic. everyone says, oh, well, I guess I got to pay it. I give up. I've never taught you guys to give up. I've never said that. Don't give up, guys and gals. I promise you. You, If you want to become successful here, you got to think outside the box. And that's how I became successful wholesaling. That's how you become successful wholesaling real estate. Uh, I truly believe if you guys want to actually go out here and do that, go through the course. We teach you how to do it. Court dockets work. They're out there. They're just schedules of court cases that they have to legally show for free. They'll never charge you for that. So uh, shout out to those uh, people doing it and learning from it. But uh, yeah. Guys, uh, I'm telling you, this is how you do it. Uh, remember, guys, um, we do have a live event coming up, Dallas, Texas, uh, Wholesaling Accelerator. be pretty fun. Send me some JV deals so you guys can come hang out with me, uh, or I can join Flip3 Plus below here. Uh, I'm excited for that. We do bonus yeah, fun. live streams after every live stream. We actually go on for a bonus hour. That's pretty cool. And uh, we live stream even more, just a uh, smaller audience, so uh, more one-on-one -on -one time for everyone. But uh that's pretty cool. You can DM us, uh, join us, all the other Flipper Plus members. But uh, yeah, send me some JV deals. Sell my paper. Dot com. com. And so uh, shout out to everyone on there. Let's show the map real quick uh, if you have any questions about that. But uh, Or just go to flipper.com and it's all in there. JV with us is right here. Click it right here. Let's go show everyone on here. If you want to hop on, let's show the map. Here's the map. You got a JV deal anywhere here. I'd uh, love to help you out. So, uh, yeah, send it there, summerpaper.com. Uh, if not, we'll uh, see you soon. So, uh, guys, send us JV deals. We're here to do it all over the country. And if you get the deal done now, I mean, easily, we'll just send you a code to join Flip3 Plus. And uh, we got a lot of people are doing deals with right now. Yep. So, uh, this is exciting. So, uh, I'm pumped up for it. I think everyone uh, is pushing the JV deals, hopefully, make us 
one of the largest wholesalers in the entire country, which is insane. Uh, it's some credit to you guys, your efforts, everything. And we're, we're putting this whole thing together and just listen, I love wholesaling. This is how I do it. And me and Zach love it. We're having a good time doing it. And uh, we want you guys to come along for the ride. So check us out at sellmypaper.com. Uh, if you guys want to join us on the extended Flip with Rick Plus, we'd love to have you. And uh, guys, you this is 